ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tapped Out Wrestling Podcast. I'm Nick McDaniel. He's Myron Fancher. How the heck are you, buddy? It's great, man. It's a great day to be back in the studio. How are you doing today, Nick? Good, man. Uh, you know, hey, we're we're getting there. We're getting there. Oh, slowly, uh, surely. man, thank God we weren't uh, we weren't influenced by those hurricanes. I really feel sorry for those people hurt by that, man. That was tough. Yeah, man. Yeah, we had a long conversation. It's just, you know, all the shows, uh, but all the people, like, you know, it's kind of, we were like, look, man, we, you know, our hearts go out to all the people that were affected by oh. it. And, you know, we just hoped that we could kind of cause a temporary distraction, you know, a little bit of entertainment, a little bit of fun, yes. uh, you know, just for, even if it's just for an hour or so, uh, take their minds off of it. Um, but, you know, and it's, it was, it was, it's a rough, it was a rough and weekend. And Pete sure. Rose. Jesus Christ. Don't even get started. On, listen, don't even get started icon. on people that have passed. I mean, Taggart, yeah. uh, you know, um, Dad on Good Times, John Am- he's, you know, he's yeah. Amos has passed. Uh, little guy from just, American Pickers. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. It's just been a it's been a rough week for sure for the pa- past mm-hmm. week, man. But but like, you know, like that we're trying <sighs> to like take your mind off of it, try to have a little fun and look to this will be an interesting case, show, folks. Yeah, hundred percent. And if you want to keep your mind look a little distracted, you know, keep your you know just set those little notifications on over on YouTube. Uh, look, it's real simple. You don't have to go searching for us anymore. Tappedoutpod dot com. Absolutely, that simple. Tappedoutpod dot com, and uh, that'll take you right to our YouTube channel. Or you become a member over at Patreon dot com forward slash Tappedoutpod. Uh, and like, look for those members. You do get the show early. You get it look like, at the day before. Um, we get some extra stuff that we're doing as well. So uh, we great look, man. It's a it's you know we're gonna try to pick it up, be positive here, have some fun hey, here for the next. I was just while. riding around yesterday, listening to YouTube music for my for my podcast. I was listening to Cornette do some reviews of stuff and and get his points about some promos that WWE were quoting yesterday. And dude, uh, the best promo going on right now is CM Punk and and Drew McIntyre. Talk about some guys making you want to watch Bad Bloods this weekend. Can you know? The, funny, yeah. We're, we're, we're let's dive into Bad Blood a little bit. Uh, by the way, six p.m. Weird start. Yeah. Um, but I did want to ask you because I agree or disagree. Tapped out pod at gmail dot com. I think the A story on Raw is CM Punk and Drew McIntyre. Oh well, yeah, and it's not even a title story. Here's the crazy thing: is it started with an accident wasn't even in like that was not the plan like what a what you know the thought process to uh, make that adjustment on the fly right Mm -hmm. like what i mean just think about that that's just crazy jesus christ no the accident no the accident like he literally accidentally got hurt and that turns into God, this is what we want. Yeah. And they so long they've hooked this. So many matches, so many occurrences, so many weird you'd think it was over and they wouldn't let it be over. And you had that strap match and you had all these other and you thought it would be over, but they just wouldn't let it drop till you get to hell in a cell. Yeah, I mean, and here's the thing. I mean, look, everybody praises CM Punk. Oh, he's so good on the... By the way, I'm not saying he's not. So let me get to the punchline here. Everybody talking about how great he was. How about Drew McIntyre going toe-to-toe with him? Been killing it. Been yeah. killing it. I, it's just... it's. I never thought... Tapped out pod gmail.com. Did you ever think you'd see the day that somebody went toe to toe with the great CM Punk and it wasn't some known name like John Cena or Randy Orton? It was like Drew McIntyre still kind of and part B to this whole conversation. Does this solidify Drew McIntyre as like he's a top like Yeah, guy. it puts him over. It puts him at a whole nother level. He's always been good. He's always been good. He was getting great. The clash of the castles and the giant sword stuff was really doing real good for his uh, his appearance. But this whole CM Punk thing has made him, in my opinion, Hall of Fame worthy. Yeah. I really think this has put him in the Hall of Fame type type criteria. He's, I think he needs a couple more, maybe like a non-COVID title run, you know, kind of thing. I think he needs a 
I think he needs another good run, but I think he's set the table to be right there in that conversation. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but look, how about crazy? This is probably your main event, by the way. Oh yeah, probably makes sense, right? Even, even more than that, even more over the heist movie that they uh, that they filmed. You know where they all showed up in their fancy cars and their fleet of cars and in the middle of Georgia Tech. The only thing that's happened to interesting in Georgia Tech Stadium in years, but. Um, they spent all that money promoting with the science and the, the cameras and the drone footage and all that, mm-hmm. but they can't get over a damn good old fashioned storyline. Well, know? look, I, I like, look, I'm not taking away from it. I'm just saying it's gotta be your main event just because of where I think this is at its peak mm-hmm. bloodline, you know, bloodline versus Cody and uh, Roman. Like, I think this story is still climbing. Like I, yes. t- I think WrestleMania, it kind of came down. That, that roller coaster started coming down, and it's at the, you know, and it's kind of on its climb again. So I think it being, now here's the, the, the million dollar question is though, do you open the show with that? Like, I, there's always the joke with like, if you're not going to be Cody, not you know, the la- last. At, well, <laughs> if, you know, what I'm saying is if you're literally Cody's last title defense, they open the show. Because obviously the main event was going to be Gunther, right? Like they were like, "Hey, we're in Germany. Gunther's got to be the main that event." And that's the, it was. So do they go that route again? Because look, uh, but here's the okay. So if it's not if it's not Cody and Roman versus the Bloodline, we've also got the Liv Morgan Rhea Ripley thing has built to a point that it's it's all has it peaked? Is this the moment? where Rhea has to win. That's my question, right? That she has to win. I love this story. This is another one. This is the only, I mean, if they'd have done this with men, it never would have gotten over this way. And I hate to sound sexist, but the greasy Dom Mysterio character is perfect for this. Have you seen the toilet paper they're selling with his face on it at WWE.com? Yeah. This is priceless, folks. This is probably... uh, been the most amusing thing they've done for in a while in my opinion uh as far as dom but the but the fight and the the fire between these women to keep this going for so long yeah i this is going to be a good quality story i'm looking forward to this one a lot and it's going to be a slobber knocker for for better way to put it lack of a better way to put it hmm yeah, I mean, look, it's a it's a good pay per view. You still Damian Priest, Finn Balor's on the card. Nia Jackson, Bailey's on the card. Yes. How wild is it, and how crazy is it that the women's title match is like one of the lowest ones on the card? Yeah. Sorry, I had a technical difficulty here with my lights. Yeah, um, I'm really looking forward to the women's title match, but it's not the highest ranked match on the card. So. I don't know. There's not title. Look at that. That's the only really title match on this card, isn't it? Is there another title match? That's it for now. Those those ones. That, that's it. Yeah, you don't need it. You don't. WWE has gotten to the point they don't need a big title match on their cards to draw big I, houses on big cards. So hold on. And, and only reason I'm saying like I think on a typical pay per view I would probably argue that a little. The problem is, is bad blood built around the hell in a cell. That's kind of yeah. your, your big one. And obviously, Cody Roman versus Bloodline that takes your that champion out of the mix as well. But that type, that's a bigger match outside the realm. Now, if you told me it was like a regular one, I might diff, argue a little bit. But this one, I think, because the focal point is hell in a cell, yeah. like that's kind of the replaces the importance over the titles. You know, now I wish it was a title match, but guess what? God forbid we have a hell in a cell that's over, not over a title, but over something personal. That's the key thing. It's personal. Somebody gonna get hurt. It, uh, by the way, bleed. let's backpedal up. You want to talk about stories? This isn't even in the notes, Myron. It's like something I thought of. Finn Balor, Damian Priest, personal. Mm-hmm. Liv Morgan and Rhea Ripley. Look, there's a title on the line, but it's personal. Liv, uh, sorry, Bailey and Nia Jax, probably more centered around title than personal. It is personal, but I would say that's more title. Cody and Roman versus Bloodline, oh, that's personal. Punk and McIntyre, it's all personal. What does Jeff Jarrett say? 
personal issues sell tickets. Yes. PLEs as well, right, or whatever. So it draws I, money. Look, I, look, we were going to go. We actually considered going, but the ticket prices were just. Well, and we, oh Lord, not even talking about them WrestleMania ticket packages. This uh, three hundred dollars for the cheapest seat in the house, and that was much higher than my fat ass could get up to. Listen, okay. let me tell you something. Let's let's just let's, for the record. If they can get it, more power to them. Like yes. I know a lot of people backlash on it and stuff like that. I'm like, listen, if somebody pays it, they was only there was only what three hundred something like three hundred something tickets left. Yeah. I think via WrestleTix, you know, on Twitter X, whatever. Um, so it's not like they didn't sell. No. Uh, you made the joke about the WrestleMania tickets. You know, there's an account. Whether it's true or not, this is all if this is true. Uh, the disclaimer. There was rumors that the front row travel packages with airfare and all that kind of stuff were fifty grand, but they were sold out. Mm-hmm. So how can people? How can anybody complain that it was you know oh it was fifty thousand dollars, you know? And I'm like, but if they sold, they sold. It's like it's like complaining because wrestlers are drawing too much money. If people are watching it and buying the tickets, nobody's getting paid too much money. Okay, tickets aren't too expensive if people are buying them. Yeah. Right. Look at baseball. Look at all your other sports. As long as it's getting what the, the owners want out of it, are they paying too much for the talent? Yeah. Happen. Are your TV deals worth too much? Are you, are any deals worth too much if you're making the money? Look, if, if nobody buys the tickets, the prices will go down. Less people will be in the building. Ticket prices will go down. It's just the market, man. It's the way it rolls. Um, but look, uh, bad blood, check it out this Saturday. Uh, I will probably watch it on delay or we'll, you know, the next yeah, day so or something like that. that yeah. We're, and we're going to get into all of that here in a minute. We're going to, when we get into the, you know, the indie stuff later. Ooh, um, like but I do, here. I want to do kind of come to you and ask you like, uh, VKM, the Vince McMahon mm-hmm. documentary. Um, I know you said you haven't watched it yet. Uh, no, I've watched a few of the episodes. Involved. Jesus Christ. Don't ever make TV plans around someone else. That it's just watch what worst. you want to watch. Yeah. Don't even say anything. Next time, don't even bring it up. Sneak. Just watch it. I so, just wanted to have a quiet time with her. You know, let's wait. watch the Vince documentary together. I don't think you get quiet time with her. No. Okay. So, um, Unless we're watching one of her shows, and it's like, that, it's, yeah. sorry. So, the, mm-hmm. what I, want, I did watch a few of the episodes, um, mm-hmm. and obviously I've heard and seen a lot of stuff as well. So we're kind of broad stroke over from you know from what I have seen at this point. Um, it, I don't think it was that bad. Now, granted, first three episodes being blunt, I haven't seen anything that was really that bad. Um, look, they, the, the, the other issue, the, the current issue, does come up, mm. but apparently it only comes up in like the last fifteen minutes of the in the entire documentary. Uh, uh. So. I see. I'm maybe I'm scared to watch this next. Maybe, maybe I'm just scared, you know, because you know we talked about we talked about something else. I was scared to do during the pre-show, and we'll probably, you know, you've got something big coming up, and I was scared to be a part of it. Maybe I'm scared to watch this documentary. Maybe I don't want to find out what's happening in this documentary. I listen. I I don't think you're going to find out anything like. Is there some confirmation? So I, we talked a little bit off air. I did tell you like two things that were confirmed, but they weren't like big news. It wasn't anything groundbreaking. So think about this. I'm halfway through, uh-huh. and there's been nothing groundbreaking. And, you know, clearly here's what I said to somebody. Everything I've seen up to this point, you ready for this, Myron? This documentary wasn't made for us. Oh. This was made for, like, a casual fan, and I mean casual or less than casual. Anybody that was inside, like, any type of inside the wrestling bubble pretty much probably knows everything up to this point with, like I said, there's been two things that I was like, hey, we thought that. We were pretty sure that was true, but now somebody is saying it and confirming that it is true. Like, to me, that's not a groundbreaking documentary. So no scandal yet. Two episodes. Nope. I'm three episodes in. Nothing. Well, 
Look, the steroid scandal stuff comes up, but I mean, we all know how that turned out. Vin, okay, it's spoiler alert. Vince beat the federal government. If you don't know that, like, I mean, and that's being that's being funny. That's a joke. Like, we know that because he clearly was still going. I just the thing is, I've I've had such a hard time rooting against Vince because I, you know, look at the Monday Night Wars. I rooted for Vince. Vince <laughs> created a lot of my childhood. Nick, Vince was, yeah, he was greasy. He was evil. You know, they blew up his car. They did all this, you know, the bang. Remember that? Remember Stone Cold Austin, Stone Cold Steve Austin doing that thing? You hated him, but he, there was so much he did. And I, I, I know he was a bad person. I know he was a bad person. But a lot of people have, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people. He, let me ask you this, because listen, I think this is what you're what you're saying you're struggling with. I find it unique uh, because a we've all look prefacing out here, not defending Vince McMahon. Here's I don't want this to. is literally no. This is the question. I'm not asking anybody to. I'm not. I'm not attacking nor defend. I'm asking literally a question here. By the way, everybody assumes all like any super successful businessman, they're dirty, they're doing shady stuff or whatever. Um, everybody's under the assumption that every allegation of Vince, against Vince is true, right? That's the only way. It, 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 everything that he that he's being accused of is true. That's that's where we are. My point being, like, what happens if it's not? Not saying it's not. I'm just saying, what happens if it's not? And the reason I say that is the people that know him well, Bruce Pritchard, um, Randy Orton, John Cena, you know, uh, Titus O'Neil of all Titus O'Neil comes out this week and says, I don't have a bad word to say about Vince. Now, if those things are terrible, like I get it. And I'm not saying every good deed he's ever done washes away any bad that he's done. I'm not even saying that either. But, it is hard for us to reconcile the fact that listen without Vince like I know you're saying oh he made your childhood here's what I'm telling people if you really want and and this might be good or bad for some people like without Vince doing with wrestling what he did I doubt we're here because we're not if it's not as successful as it is we're not the fans we are and do a podcast but he also by the way there's probably not Ted Turner has no, no one to want to compete with in the wrestling business without Vince McMahon. So there's probably not, no, there really, there isn't a successful WCW. So you see where I'm going? Like without that, there's, or would we still be not necessarily the territory systems? Would we just have basically indies everywhere? And would guys be making the money they're making now? If there wasn't, it gets really, he wouldn't, really he wouldn't hard. Wouldn't have an AEW if it wasn't for WWE. No, I mean, because if, there's probably money. If money wasn't involved, no, because nobody the, would. You, you, somebody, you want me to tell you how you get to that argument? That, that that you're right. Vince doesn't continue to prop up ECW. Tony Khan was a massive ECW fan, yeah. so Vince propped up ECW for a long time financially. So then, does he get? Because Tony Khan likes that wrestling. He doesn't like Vince's wrestling so much. You see what I mean? So then I'm like, okay, well, does he does he have that passion without the industry you created? Oh, was he a WCW fan? Probably. I don't know. Well, he was. Vince he's, got the TV deals. Vince got wrestling on big primetime TV before anybody else did like that. And AEW is on primetime TV. AEW is trying to sell a massive, massive TV deal right now. And they wouldn't; those deals wouldn't be there if it hadn't been for Vince making. Those if, deals. if if Vince doesn't make it an international, like literally a global product, there is the demand's just not there. Is it just some local? Is it on? Is it still on Saturday mornings or Saturday nights? You know the recap Sunday shows or, or whatever. Just, so yeah. it is a struggle. I, I am look. I'm going to commit. I'm going to have this thing done. I, I think we've had conversations. I actually had. We haven't done a coffee cross faces forever. But I had two of the people reach out to me and say, hey, I'm going to finish this thing. And like, hey, are you interested in doing one of these? Like sitting down and diving into it and kind of going through it. And I'm like, we'll see. Let's see how much meat's on the bone after I finish these last three. 
you know, if there's something there. But, like, because through three, my take, I don't know that there's nothing more than a, probably a 15, 20-minute conversation about it. And because the last 15, if it involves this current situation, who knows? I've um, seen a huge bunch of memes out of it. Jesus. Of course we do, right? That, that's, what, <laughs> that's the world we live in. No, no, no actual content, no actual, like, you know, functional talent, but there's tons of memes, you know. Um, so speaking of content, by the way, CW debuted on, uh, you know, yeah. on, like, literally last night. Um, new intro, new belts. By the way, like the new belts. New I'm logo. Sure you did. New, yep. I, I had to look at that white belt for a minute I because I don't like white belts. I looked at that white belt and I liked it. You mean the strap, the actual the white strap? Like, yeah, the white strap. Yeah, yeah. Um, I liked it. They they got that thing just right. Uh, the the men's belt was great. Um, man, everything was right from Shawn Michaels' music hitting, and him coming out there to the ring in his stupid hat, and um. It was, and then Triple H, and everything set in the atmosphere. And then you get that massive women's match. Uh, I, I, Roxanne Perez, I swear, is is so phenomenally talented. Uh, it's our first time really getting uh, her and Julia is for in, in a big match like that. Uh, you've got so much women's talent in NXT. Great show, top to bottom. All the matches were good and tight. Uh, promos were all great. Cora Jade made her big thing. And then you got your other Jade. You got your Jade Cargill and your Bianca Belair coming out to help your North American Women's Champion, Canna James. And now they're going to have a six women's match on the next show. So, and you, so you brought up, you know, <laughs> Jade and Bianca there. Obviously, Punk involved in that title match where Trick Williams captures the the title. A town down going to be you know on the next show. Here's the question: Randy's like, doing something. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's coming. They, 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 so now that they're on the over on the CW, and they're are they going to try to genuinely build out an like third brand, or is it going to just kind of be like I know they changed the look and changed some things up or whatever. It the question becomes like a we we were still looking. I don't know if you've got Google on your machine there. Um, to see what the, if the numbers have come in yet, I uh, I still no, still no. I looked on my phone real quick. Uh, the house uh, was full, the crowd was was excited. You said they're not going to stay on the road though. No, so that's that to clarify. I know a few weeks ago that was that was everything that was out there. They were going to stay on the road or whatever. Well, apparently it's they're remodeling or redoing or putting a, giving it a makeover. The uh, the studio they were kind of using in the performance center. I have to gamble that. With the new logo look, they're probably going to get rid of some of that, pat, you know, the little like orange, all, the color per se. Yeah, um, that's probably what some of that is. Uh, but they are going to redo that, so that's going to be cool to see. You know, kind of just in general how that plays out. The question I had is about maintaining it. So let's say, do you do you have a guess for what the number is? They normally are six to seven hundred thousand. What's a successful I, I, day at the office? Well, you told me CW gets more houses than USA. So there's a little more. I I, I did, but here's the catch. They get 18 million more households. Well, USA's already in like 70. So we're not talking, you know what I mean? If, if it was, hey, one was 18 and the other one got 18 more and it was 36, that's a number. 70 to 88 million, you still might think that's a number. But I don't think so because let's be uh, blunt. If you were rattling off TV uh, stations, networks, or whatever, don't you kind of think of USA way before you get to CW? Yeah. Except for man, I miss those those great superhero shows. Remember when they had all the good superhero shows? I, I, that I do. Arrow, Flash, all of those. Like that was uh, that was their peak, right? So, but here's the thing: somebody asked me what I thought was a successful number, and they were stunned when I said. If they maintained where they were at, if they were if they were at seven hundred thousand, it's a good day at the office. Oh yeah. Well, oh, yeah. Nick, why would you think that? Because the average show, 
it was the year ending 2023 that those these statistics don't come out like as readily available uh, for CW. In 2023, the average show on that on that network, like a higher end show, was like 430 thousand. So if they were at 700 thousand, like immediately they're like the number one regular scheduled show. Yeah, I threw a disclaimer there for a reason. Not anomalies, regularly scheduled show. The Bristol race apparently was on CW. It peaked at a million, but it averaged around nine hundred and something thousand. So it, again, a live sporting event. So here's the thing: maybe their value is they're looking to make this change. They're carrying some college football games that got like three hundred, four hundred thousand, you know, in that range as well. So you've got a little bit of a, you know advantage that like if 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 all of that base moves over you're immediately the number one show think about that that's insane to me that they could go from being kind of middle of the pack like they would be the focal point for that network you know when it comes to sporting and wrestling seems like a good way to like segue into live sports it gives you experience on how to handle it on your network plus wrestling fans may watch sports too some of us watch sports i watch sports you watch sports uh i don't know but it would seem like they would watch more uh now my smart dvr found it without me having to look for it uh i would have had to look for it if it's not for that i found the cw i haven't watched it since we switched over to this new cable provider but uh will people know where to look for it that's the hard uh, part. Look, I'll be in the anomaly. It's not on my package. I just assumed it would be. I never even looked for it. Went to look for it last night. It's not there. Now, luckily, I have the app. That's how I was watching the NWA stuff when it was on there. And mm. I was like, okay, it'll be available the next day. And I'll watch it on the next day, apparently. So, mm. you know, it is what it is. Now, that that's was that sucks for the NWA, man. And, you know, th- they are on Twitter now. So their first day on Twitter, they replayed that. Well, they didn't replay. They put their, they released their, uh, their show uh, that they taped a while back. Uh, replayed it. It was their October first show, and they got uh, Thomas Latimer won the NWA championship. Uh, so that was cool. But man, it sucks for them getting bumped off. I wish they could have got to stay. Um, look, it's probably an exclusivity deal, and that's the yeah, that probably. Kind of how that fold exclusivity kind of, deals. Mm. Say those, those things apparently matter in wrestling. Apparently, so. Um, but look, uh, there's a there's a let's get into the conversation about like it looks like AEW not going to have exclusivity. Um, they this, look. Uh, I know you're hesitant to jump on this bandwagon, but I think. Okay, so again, we're recording Wednesday prior to Dynamite. We do this on a regular basis. Um, so when you're listening to the public, it would have aired. So you get to immediately knock us if we're wrong or give us credit if we're right. Cause it's beforehand. It's the fifth year anniversary, massive show for them. Congratulations. Was last week. Yeah. Kudos. I know I seem like a, a, a naysayer or a jerk about AEW, but congratulations. That's a big milestone. It's, it's great. You did this. It's good for wrestling. Congratulations. So, tonight's as good a night as any to announce you the new TV deal. Like, if it's if it's happened, tonight's the best night to do it, in my opinion. Tony said it has a big announcement. Um, so, here's where, by the way, this is all the pre- you know predictions, et cetera, right? The word came out, $170 million, three year. I know they said four. The fourth year's an option, blah, blah, blah. But there's rumors have been flying around that Rampage is potentially going to go away. They're drawing 100,000 people. Here's First of all, do you agree with that, that that it should, for one? Well, nobody watches it. I mean, 150, 140, 30,000 people. I mean, Friday night, 10 o'clock, you're either in bed because you're old or you're out because you're young. We were joking that more people watch, like, Conrad and Eric talk about old wrestling than – and I'm exaggerating on some for every some given weeks, but that's not like too far of a stretch, right? No. That's it's kind of crazy to think about that, right? Here's a crazy one. That's what 
that's what they were getting on some like Ring of Honor, like the AEW dark shows that they were doing, uh, and some like NWA. Like there were people. That's 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 a, that's, a, that's a normal thing. Anyway, sidebar because I wanted to say. I think Rampage should go away. I agree because I think it's go- it could be the third hour. Would you do Collision or Dynamite? That's the other question. Like if you were going to add a third hour to a show, oh, Dynamite! It, it's got to be right. Yeah, we're on the same this page. Collision, Collision. You have to reschedule for a a w. I'm sorry for WWE pay per views. Every time always, Collision, but every time they run against a WWE pay per view, it kills them. So they've been yeah. running this week's on Thursday night because of that. So why add well, no, a third they're, they're hour? They're taping it on Thursday. They're, but why add a third hour to a show that you have to move around? No, no. I, look, I'm in total agreement. I, I do. Do you want? Here's the here's the here's your obstacle though. Do you get bumped this next season with hockey and basketball to a show that you've made three hours? You're getting bumped for those sports, by the way. Let's be clear. Oh, it yeah. It doesn't matter whether you're on Wednesday or Saturday. The third hour. It. The reason I think me and you agree to this, we talked about this a little bit off air, the reason we agree it's got to be Dynamite, that's what you're taping Rampage now. Yeah. Just, you don't have to take the 20-minute break to change the ring skirt and set up and have Tony Khan come out, coked up and making, you know, like firing us all up. Because that's what it felt like. That night he came out of the end of Duluth and he was like, Wah! I was like, whoa, I want whatever he's got. Yeah, um, we're, it's time to go, Nick. Let's. Yeah, let's so, but... <laughs> If you literally just the thing about it's the wrestlers are there, the production team's there, uh, everybody that you need to do rampage, just hey, they're there anyway. Yeah, I'd like to third hour. I'd like to know what the cost is. You've already rented the building. You've already got your talent. You've already paid, you know, your production people to be there and set up, which has got to be like a huge amount of time. Look, I listen to Eric enough. He essentially says. Your cost is the feed for the third hour. It's like, you know, you're really not. It's Because here's the thing. To them, the reason it's such an easy thing to do, they're already filming Rampage. Yeah. It's like the, you are already going to be in the building for the third hour. You are already going to, like, all of these things are already, like, you're literally going to be paying for the feed to go live, continue to be live versus recording the show and then, you know, coming later. So, so they're down to two shows. Is it, that what you think? Or or no. or do you do you can you say what the f you want to do what the f you want to because you work for Tony Khan and he don't give a f, whatever whatever the are you swerving me Nick? Uh, listen, I don't know if this is true or not. Like I, I hope, I hope it's I hope it's not from a content po- like as far as the consumer standpoint. I'm worried about what it'll do to the quality of the content because that's kind of what happened when they kept adding those other shows to begin with. However, for sake of the financial stability of the company to have more money, talents getting paid, et cetera, sure, there is a plus. However, look, if, if, because, you know, we went back and forth about this, about Fox getting a deal, you know, I, for, I was completely convinced. By the way, I could be completely wrong with what I said a few weeks ago. I was like, there's no way this thing's on Fox. It's going to be Fox Sports 1 if they get it, or maybe even FX. Now that the numbers have kind of been put in front of me and I've run over some numbers, maybe. I wonder. Did they ever rename it AEW's Ring of Honor? No. So it's still just Ring of Honor? Mm Mm-hmm. I can understand why they were thinking about renaming it, because I would love to see Ring of Honor get it a show somewhere you remember what you remember when you remember when espn would get a, a random wrestling show in there somewhere mm-hmm. maybe that's what you get that kind of thing on fox Sports. I, I i look i tony khan was really adamant he was trying to package ring of honor in this tv deal i'd love to I, see it i honestly hope this is what but now here's the problem would Fox want, no disrespect to the Ring of Honor brand, but if they're going to get it, they're going to want, you know what I mean? They're going to want, like, hey, we want one of the established brands. We don't want Ring of Honor. Like, we want Dynamite, Collision, or something to that effect, in my opinion. Uh, so I think there's still a lot of moving parts. And by the way, 
here's the here's the here's the kicker because we got to get kick in the we got to get rolling here in a minute. If you add a third show, do you where does it end up? Because if Rampage moves to just the third hour of Dynamite, now you've got Wednesday and Saturday. Do you move it to Sunday? Nope, <laughs> can't happen. Right, not gonna happen. Could it? Sure, but guess what? If you're on Fox, it ain't Sunday. They got football. They got NFL football on them. Not going to happen. So let's go with the assumption it is Fox. That's a big assumption. Friday? Did you know they do college football on Fridays? Probably not going to happen. Thursday? All right. Well, I don't know what the heck they air on Thursdays, but guess what you're up against? No, I'm talking about Fox. Thursday night NFL. No, that's on Amazon. Amazon. So you, are, which you would be up against, you would be up against Thursday night football. Can't do Wednesday. You've already got dynamite on there. Tuesday, you'd be you'd be head to head. You'd be on Fox. You'd be head to head with NXT. On, do you want to go back to that battle every week? Here's the one that'll make you the light bulb go off. What about Monday? Now you got to you're up against the NFL. But here's the argument, Myron. January 1st, Netflix is behind a paywall. WWE Raw is behind a paywall. What if I want to watch my wrestling on Monday nights and I don't have to sign up for your Netflix account? Would that be the new home? Would you do Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday? for your? Would you do Monday as your third show? Because people are used to watching TV on their cable box without signing up for Netflix to watch wrestling. So that absence would not cause saturation because it would be only be taking the place of something that would be gone. Want a hot take? Netflix doesn't care whether you watch. I don't think so. My, me personally, I don't know how, how, how genuinely concerned are they with they, that you watch raw live and just watch it in the first 48 hours. They it's on care. demand. It's on demand at that point. They just, they care if you consume it. You can consume it six years later. They don't want you canceling your subscription is what they care about. It's an attraction. They they want you to, well, I think they want you to, obviously they want you to watch it. They want you to watch it enough that you don't cancel because that thing's on 52 weeks out of the year. That's what Raw was. Raw was a like, hey, you can't cancel for a month and come back if you're a WWE Raw fan. Mm. You have to keep your Netflix subscription. By the way, those annoying commercials... That's why you're going to pay $15 and not pay $6 like Nick to have ads. You know, you want it to be ad free. There's going to be a lot more opportunities for commercials in a, in a three hour show that you're used to having commercials with anyway. Yeah. So time with, I, I'm not saying they should run the third show. If they, if, if let us know, tapped out pod, gmail.com. If AEW picked up a third show is Monday night, the night. Or would you choose a different night? Because it's creatures that we are creatures of habit, man. We will watch. Think about any time one of the shows gets preempted and the shows get moved to another night. Look at what happens. What happened to look? And we love SmackDown. I'm not. I'm not bashing them. This is normal. When SmackDown was on Fox, it was it was two or over. It would go to FS1, and that thing would barely get a million if it did. So. Why don't you just slide into that? The problem is, do you? How soon do you have to do this move? Because you got to do it soon. Because if you ride this thing out and you're waiting until later, is it too late? Do people's habit get broken? Does that make sense? Or do you time oh, yeah. it out? And we're like, hey, January when they move out of they when they move off, we move right in. So when they're flipping through your channel. Listen, I'm not knocking people. There's plenty good old. There's a good, some good old people that are sitting there flipping through their channels, and they go, "Where's my wrestling?" Oh, there it is. Who's this? Who? Oh, there's Chris Jericho. I'm in the right place. You forget. You forget. Sometimes people don't sit there and and do research for a wrestling show, or follow wrestling news, or go to wrestling shows all the time, and that's. What do we always say, Myron? The difference between AEW's six, Fans. seven, eight hundred thousand to the one point five million that watch Raw 
It's the casual fans. There's your gap, folks. You're going to catch somebody that is a friend of my wife's whose dad literally said he was looking for wrestling one night. Oh, there's wrestling on. He doesn't know that he was like, hey, I, 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 it's AEW. I had never heard of him before, so I started watching it. It's oh yeah, he likes it. Okay. He didn't realize, like, oh, my bad. You know, because that was when uh, he discovered it when they were going head-to-head with NXT, and NXT wasn't running one week. He was flipping for his wrestling, thought it got moved on a channel, found that one, and watched it one week and goes, they got him enough that he went back the next week. Even though NXT was on, he was watching both of them. That's all it took. So maybe that's the answer. Monday night. Why not? So, well, look, I'll tell you the bad nights they don't want to pick. You know why you don't want to do Fridays and Saturdays with us? In the car. That's right, man, because we are making the drives over the weekends, trying to catch these all these indie shows. And, of course, Making the Drives is brought to you every week by jmartinandcompany.com. Pressure washing, window cleaning. They'll do your driveway, do your house. Do it all, man. jmartinandcompany.com. It's the only people we trust with our houses, sidewalks, all the – like I said, it's gutters. It's windows. It's the home. It's the driveway. Doesn't matter, man. jmartinandcompany.com is the company we choose. We can – you know, anytime, anytime. And even for our family, that's who we recommend, man. Yep. Nobody well, man, but Jamie. Look, crazy weekend coming up. Uh, first of all, first and foremost, on Friday, Southern Fried's heading to Auburn, Georgia. Oh. They got their big food truck show out there. And, look, looks like it's always going to be a fun time, man. I loved the last time I went down to Auburn for one of these shows. You get the free wrestling right in the middle of the park. You get your food trucks. You just wander around getting you some of them nice, nice snacks. You get to see your favorite wrestlers from Southern Fried Championship Wrestling in the middle of the park. Just go enjoy yourself, folks. I haven't seen the weather yet for this area, but I would advise you to get out there and check this out. Let's see. Friday, Saturday. Oh, 63 for the low, 81 for the high. That should be beautiful. Yeah, a little bit. It's only. It's out. only. Only like a 15% chance of rain. So that should be a blast. Oh, hoodie Look, time. it's right there, downtown City Hall of Auburn. Right there. It's a, there's a bunch of cute little shops there on the end. That the, if you take take your significant other, they'll have fun shopping into there while you're checking it out. The food was really good last time we mm-hmm. went. It was really spot on. So, yeah, absolutely. Check out Southern Fried. I know Todd Sexton, Judas, the approved, Hunter James, Billy Buck, and all the, you know, your, the usuals oh, will be yeah. there. I got a feeling that ct keys the champion may show up as well so get out there and check him out you know Ooh. it'll be a it'll be a fun show no matter what man um action wrestling's running down in tyrone uh they, it's the founders day festival right there in shamrock park well, that's always a big big deal for them that's one of their big shows every year uh, it, by the way it's because it's a free show too mm-hmm. so if you want to check out action and get hooked because you will if you check them out once you're going to probably be hooked in at all their shows right there in tyrone uh look you know how you know it's going to be a great show? Infantry's going to be on the card. Oh, Carly yeah. Bravo, Sean Dean. That's all. I, I could stop right there. I can't say enough good about those two guys. Some of the some of the most professional and also nicest guys I've ever met in the wrestling business. Mm. The, mm. Carly Bravo for years has been, uh, you know, hands down one of the most entertaining, you know, charismatic guys we've seen. And uh, yeah, and talented. I was getting there. Yeah, that we've had the pleasure to get to know and watch him, you know, come from and to where he's at now. It's been an awesome ride. Mm-hmm. So absolutely check those two guys out. Colby Colby Carino's coming into town to fight on another guy that I'm really high on, and that yeah. is Rico Gonzalez. Oh, I paid to see that match. Yeah. Uh it is like is Rico the guy like right now, there's like there's I'm always looking for like Who's that guy that's – he's there. He's just got – like, he's so talented. When he gets in the ring, he's so skilled. He's so he's so good. Yeah. yeah, it's like, you know, he's he's got gold at a couple places. So, I'm like, all right, that's good. He's, you know, he's hitting his stride. But uh, I, that match alone should deliver. So, even, look, we're two things in. And we're already telling, like, why you should get Yeah. It. So – 
Fun day. Card's uh, full of fun. talent. Card's absolutely just full of talent. Oh, look, Bobby Flacco, by the way, back again. He is. He picked up a win this past week. He is the no, he's number one contender for that action heavyweight Following title. Following him again. on social media is probably one of the best things to do. Bobby Flacco is so interesting. Uh, yeah. Bobby Flacco, it's your time, man. It is your time. That day's coming sooner than later. Shug D, Darian Bingston, bunch. Of, look, don't sleep on Darian Bingston. He's a nut, he's a young kid yeah. that has started. He's breaking through as well. So I'm really mm. high on him as well. Uh, and Shug D obviously is just veteran of veterans around the Georgia scene. Mm. Go ahead and check out Action Wrestling in Tyrone Shamrock Park. It's the Founders Day Festival. And by the way, we continually tell you guys follow them on social media, especially yep. promotions like. Southern Fried Action and Turnbuckle we're going to talk next because they run so often you don't want to miss a show and they're running at multiple places so that it sometimes can be hey keep up with them and that's the best place to do it so speaking of Turnbuckle they're back in Buford Georgia and I ain't going to this we'll get there hold on hold on Mm -hmm. Tannery Row House Buford Georgia Uh, look it's going to be a the VIP meet and greet Harley Cameron Sotnam Singh Sotnam Singh's a monster, man. It's it's a great opportunity to get you know get the VIP meet and greet. Uh, I strongly it's 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 a value like no other. The eight by ten, get the autograph, get a picture with the talents, on and on and on. And uh, look, by the way, fifty bucks right up on the VIP stage, sit right by the ring, full menu, full bar, all that good stuff. He's it's got a, a blast. twelve by sixteen. He's so big. Yeah. Yeah, he exactly. couldn't fit on an eight by ten. Correct. But uh, the usual suspects will be in the house. QT Marshall, I'm assuming, you know, look, Brady Booker, Fire Morales, uh, Angelica Riss, Trevor Blackwell, the warden, on and on and on. Now to the punchline, right now to the story. So uh, Jack Jameson has officially said he's going to be in the house, uh, obviously, for this for this thing. So here's where we are, folks. I know I, yesterday on, the, you know, on the Tapped In show, I – I began questioning myself, which is probably a smart thing to do, uh, of what I've gotten myself into. Uh, But paperwork's been signed. Contracts have been signed. I've got to deliver. I've got to, you know, back up where I accepted a challenge to get into the ring with one Jack Jameson. And, uh, look, we're going to see what happens. He might get his hands on me. But... I thought about it for, you know, about 24 hours since I recorded yesterday's show. He gave me any stipulation I want. Just to get me in the ring, he gave me any stipulation I want. And I've thought about it long and hard, consulted with some few pe- a few people, got a few good ideas. And as you notice, there's a little more bass in my voice today. There's a little bit less concern you than I had yesterday. You take a or something? No. I thought about it, though. Um, I can give you one. I mean, not the shot. I can give you a bottle. Um, but here's the thing, Myron. I got a plan. So if you want to find out what the stipulation is and you want to see what, what I have in store for Jack Jameson, I hope it works because otherwise I'm getting an old-fashioned ass whooping. But I hope it works. Is your life insurance paid up? Yes, I am. I, look, I, I always okay. keep my, I'm, you know, I, for obvious reasons, that's what I do. I'm going to make sure that's okay. all good. Okay, now. Am I still in the will as beneficiary of no. all of the podcast nothing. assets? Nothing. You get nothing. <laughs> Heath, you suck. He, it ain't him either. So don't, don't worry about it. It ain't him either. So, so here's the thing: you should probably be there to defend it to make sure that it that it continues on after this. Because, long story short, folks, if you're gonna you want to see, you're going to give that shit to your little your little pupil, Rick Page, aren't you? No, I'm not. So. If here's the thing, Myron. Jack Jameson, I accepted. Of course I went through moments of doubt, self doubt. Maybe I made a mistake. I've reached out to some people that pretty smart people, kinda helped me out. Some people in the business. We got something for you. If you want to see what that is, fans, you should check us out. Tannery Row Ale House, Buford, Georgia, Friday. Bell time, by the way, is 7 o'clock. It's an early Friday show. A lot of them start at 8. This one's a 7. Come out, have food, have a little drink, and watch what happens. Because you know, we always say you never, ever know who's going to show up and what's going to happen at a turnbuckle oh, show. What, so, what you do, 
Heath, you, you get your phone and you dial nine and one when Nick gets into the ring. And then when something happens, you only have to press that other one to get somebody to come get him. Here's, you, want a, you want a teaser? What? He's going to be busy. I don't think he's going to be able to get on his phone. And we'll leave it at that. Yeah. So we will see you guys at Tannery Road, Buford, Georgia. Bell time is 7. Get there early. Get there at like 6.30. Get your tickets. Sit down. Get your drink or little thing and get started. So that'll be a fun night. So that's not the only thing on Friday. Forever Pro is running in Rome. That's right, folks. Forever Pro Wrestling in Rome, Georgia. But it's uh it's there for the uh, I'm gonna mispronounce this. I'm just gonna say it's at a fair. It's at the fair that's there. This it's you know it's Coosa Valley. I, I was gonna guess, but I was like, hey, I don't wanna mess it up. But Coosa no, Valley a, that's, Fair. That's a common name where I grew up in Alabama. That's not surprising. Coosa, Coosa Valley. <laughs> All kind uh, of weird names yeah. where I grew up. Show starts at seven, folks. So We're get Coosa there. Indians, if I'm uh, the ticket, by the way, is free admission if with your fair ticket purchase. So like if you're buying your ticket to get into the fair. Go watch the show while you're there. Super, it'll be a great little. What if I buy a good ticket? What do you mean a good ticket? Well, you said fair. Oh yeah, no, that's it's the fair ticket. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. And uh, look, Kevin Ryan, Chris Crunk, Shane Oakley, tons more. Forever Pro. Look, tip your cap to Kevin Ryan. He's doing a great job with Forever Pro, uh, Mm -hmm. and we're big fans of their product. So absolutely go check them out. Whether they're in Rome, Chattanooga, Calhoun, doesn't matter. Yeah, good. But this Friday they are in Rome at the fair. Uh, GCW, which is actually the Georgia Championship Wrestling GCW, is in Milledgeville at the Deep Root Stage, Halloween Bash 2024. Um, Look, I know Halloween, always a fun, you know, people really get into that. But uh, I can tell you right off the first match that I saw on this card, Sal Fashion, Sal the Pal versus Alexander Lev. And I was like, dude, there you go. Yeah, NWA all the way, man. You're bringing in two NWA talents. You've got some amazing, amazing guys on this card. You got Damian Bennett. Uh, man, I, I this is a phenomenal card. I wish I could get out and see this. Yeah, look, Damian Bennett's a great friend of the show. It's been a long time since we've seen him in person. I keep saying i got to figure out a way. Obviously, I'm tied up Friday night. I'm, in, I'm tangled up in this other mess, so we can't get out there to Milledgeville, but uh, absolutely want to get out and see Dam- uh, Damian Bennett again soon. Unrated are going to defend their titles against the Dirt Road Dynasty. Bunch more you know, are going to be there. Future. So check out Georgia Championship Wrestling, Milledgeville, Georgia, at the Deep Root Stage. Also, uh, like... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put on a ring here. I'm going to go out on a, a limb here and say unrated is the future of tag team wrestling in Georgia. Well, yeah. I mean, they're young. They've got plenty of time to prove you right, so we'll see. Um, SCA, Royston, Georgia. Mm-hmm. Uh, clock got, you know, card subject to change, folks. So they are there every Friday, and when we mean it's card subject to change, we found out last week Xander Seabolt versus Tower – Rick Page could not, you know, he just he's constantly getting involved. Ugh. So this week they pushed the match up. So it was supposed to be next week, but it's actually this Friday. Page in a cage. Page in a cage. Tower Seabolt for that title, man. That's uh, it's gonna be something for sure. How about my man? How about my man Seabolt, man? He is on cards all over the state of Georgia. He's got championship matches here. Easily the most improved over the 2024. You got to give this man some credit, man. Uh, yeah, so. Awesome shows. Get up. Y'all got to get up there. The venue is awesome. What they're put together is awesome up there. Um, I enjoy it every time I get up there. So try to get out and see the Royston Dome, feel the atmosphere. Uh, it's just like going into one of those old buildings. I feel like uh, maybe it's a Dallas Sportatorium when I'm up there. I didn't check go. them out. That's what it looks yeah. like in pictures. Every Friday there in the Royston Dome, SCA, check them out. Should be a blast. And by the way, the reason you want to go is because it's setting up a massive show the following week as well. And there will be ramifications from this match that affect Fighter mm-hmm. Web the next week. Saturday, Premier All Star Wrestling in Carrollton, Georgia. Um, look, unique champion versus champion for a change. Mm hmm. Stevie Ray Frost, who I know you're real high on, you've been yep. you know a big fan of his lately, yep. is going to take on 
Aaron Dallas, who is another youngster who uh, we saw a while back and uh, popular, looking, very popular uh, young man, getting a lot of bookings all over Georgia, showing up on cards everywhere. Um, unfortunately, Donald Jakes is involved in this match. Donald Jakes, uh, easily manager of the year in Georgia, if we look at it that way. Uh, Donald Jakes. Uh, if he cannot get involved, I, I got to give, uh, I got to give this one a, a great match. Yeah, the problem is that I don't really know that that guy can. That's his problem. He cannot stay out of what the you know shouldn't be. There's a sleeper match on this card, by the way. Uh, DCVC Murder One Joe Black yes. will be in action on this card. Sleeper match. Don't do this often, but I'm gonna say sleeper match. By the way, Grayson Pierce versus the Kenway. This is the true true test of Grayson Pierce. This is just, I know he's getting a lot of respect right now for the way his attitude and the way he's done things, but this is about to see how he can do in the ring versus Kenway, who's an absolute technician. He crushed it. He crushed it at Disruptor versus Rico yeah. Gonzalez. I'm just telling you. So I'm I'm really excited. Uh, can't tell you that this would not pause. It's my wife's birthday. Probably not going to be a show in my future for Saturday. If there was one, this was one I was considering for sure because I was curious. Mm -hmm. I really wanted to see this match. So check them out down in Carrollton, Premier All Star Wrestling. Give them a follow on social media. Check them out absolutely for sure. Doors open at seven, bells at eight. Tickets are ten bucks, man. Kids ten and under for free. Can't beat it, dude. It's a it's a great oh, yeah. it's a great blast for a show. So, uh, Chatsworth, Georgia, Renegade Championship Wrestling on Saturday. Um, Look, Tyler Gasway and his team, they just roll first and third every single – they're just clockwork, man. Yep. I had you know, got promotions like, you know, SCA, Renegade Championship Wrestling, who kind of get a block schedule and they just keep rolling. Southern Fried, right. when they get on their biweekly show, it's really cool to see. Chris Gaines versus Damian Bradshaw. Jeremy Prater versus Torque, and they're best of seven. They're at match six, by the way. So, at any time, this thing could be over. West Blaze is taking on the senior official Josh Cox there. Renegade Championship Wrestling, Chatsworth, Georgia. Again, tip our caps to Tyler Gazaway. He is just yeah, promoting and pushing it out there. I, I, I got to give people credit for being able to run every two weeks consistently, run for long times like they have. It's It's got to be more work than, than you can imagine. Oh, yeah. Like, it, 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 you know, people like, look, I know they're in Alabama. We don't talk about them a ton, but Pro South does it weekly. Um, you know, SCA does it weekly. Kudos to those guys. That's that's a commitment. I, I can't say anything but it, but it's yeah. a commitment. Boulevard up there at SCA, I've been so impressed with that guy. Uh, I've not known him that long, uh, but I've been so impressed with that guy. Yeah. Uh, also on Saturday, TCW is going to be running in yeah. Sugar Hill at Indio Brewing Hispanic Heritage Celebration. There, I think you're going to that show. Probably. Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, I'm down in that town, that area, several times a month already that's right down from my house probably five minutes from my house probably. how cool is it nick that we're having so much wrestling right by where i live disruptor yeah, that's a plus. turnbuckle all the time i'm going to wrestling right by my house this has never happened before there's holy there's a show in lawrenceville next week i think yeah. there's i mean so between buford sugar hills lawrenceville all the vicinities dude we're it's awesome and, and then Auburn, too, now. This mm -hmm. show right here, folks, this is such a beautiful area. It's in downtown Sugar Hill. That's an amazing brewery. The atmosphere could not be beat. There's restaurants all over the place, bars. So I think we went last year, and you can, yes. grab, a, you can grab a beer, yeah. have a seat out there. Open container. Watch. Yep. It's, it's awesome. You got to yeah. check this out, folks. So you will check them so out. Happy. TCW free show four p four p.m. is the bell time just yep. so because it's a Saturday I know people are tricking you know we, if I if thing, I know uh, QT Marshall you will be out of there in time to get home for uh, Bad Blood or it'll be close you won't be far behind yeah, yeah. it'll be something like that yeah so absolutely check them out uh, like I said QT Marshall Vari Morales and Helica Risk Rico Gonzalez who we spoke about a minute ago and uh, Robin Renegade all on this card think about it. Think about it. You could go to free wrestling shows all weekend. If you're going to complain about how much bad blood could was, you can go to free top of the line indie shows. Friday and Saturday. Yeah. Friday and Saturday. Southern Fried. 
Action, TCW, all these other shows are running for free. And you can see amazing wrestling. It, here's what I would recommend, because a lot of these, these promotions do run paid shows. Yeah. If you want to just, like you said, go, tr- go try a couple of them, pick your favorite, and then start supporting them. Go to their paid shows and support these guys and stuff. That's what I would recommend because I think you'll uh, realize yeah, how fun you could say, especially with definitely. your kids. It'll be a blast. Oh, definitely. Uh, last but not least, Sunday, IWE. Hey, they're in Lexington, North Carolina. Why are you talking about a show in North Carolina? Okay, because it's IWE. They're out of Augusta. They're going up there and doing a cross-promotion show. Fascinated by this. A lot of more promotions in Georgia have been trying this. TCW has tried it. Uh, Classic Cities tried it. Uh, I'm sure somebody else has it. I've slipped my mind. But, yeah, they're up there in North Carolina. They're going to run this show. Uh, it's a really, really big step out. So yeah. let's, I hope they do well, and I'm interested to see how, they, how this turns out. Yeah, Chad, Chad Skywalker's on the card. Darian Bingston, who we discussed as earlier, is on the card. Skrilla, whole bunch of you know names that we recognize here in Georgia. So, again, I, look, I get it. If you're in Georgia, you're probably not driving to Lexington, Kentucky, to see, or North Carolina to see this show. But if you're in, we got a ton of listeners in the Carolinas. Oh, yeah. Bounce on over and check them out. And look, and we don't want to – look, we understand lots of stuff going on there. We kind of want to come back to that a little bit. We understand that. Um, hopefully it can take your mind off things. You can actually go over and enjoy a good show there yeah. uh, on Sunday and just kind of, you know, take stuff off your mind for a little while. So IWE in Lexington, North Carolina. It's ACE versus IWE. It's the, that's the card, so it's kind of an interpromotional show. Um, absolutely want to check it out. And, um, you know, I'm sure they'll have a put the great show because – it's kind of what they do, man. It's uh, they do some good shows. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, speaking of good shows, show. Myron, mm-hmm. you can find some really good shows on YouTube. Oh, at yeah. TappedOutPod.com or Patreon.com forward slash TappedOutPod. Look, go to TappedOutPod.com. You can click like the page, subscribe to the page, turn your notifications on. If you feel so inclined, go through all of the videos, like, 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 <laughs> yeah, and all that kind of stuff. That Algorithm helps too. Me, man. Algorithm. Absolutely. But you can be a paid member there to get the show early. You can get bonus content and all this kind of stuff there as well as patreon.com forward slash tapped out pod. I don't know, man. A lot of people are kind of coming back to the Patreon. They're like, hey, I like the Patreon thing again. Uh, now that that scares over, we're not going to go into that. That, that. Like a lot of people are migrating back over. Um, there are some limits to things that when I post things, uh, you probably notice like the upcoming indie shows. The, fill, the credit fill stamper for that list that I copy and paste between the two. Um, I basically have to copy the, you, the Patreon link and go, it's a free link. You can go over there and look at it. Because if I post that link with all of that mm-hmm. content on it, it sometimes has to, they limit how many characters you can put on YouTube. Yeah. It's like four or five posts to get it all on there. Yeah, it's it's a pain. It's literally a pain. And so I just kind of was like, all right, I can't do this. I'm just going to share the link and so patreon.com forward slash tapped out pod youtube is tapped out pod.com and like i said become a member there and get the uh, early stuff the extra stuff all that good stuff but um man it's a it's a pretty good chunk of shows this weekend uh we we'll go ahead and warn you next weekend's gonna be a long one oh it's a lot yeah. we may actually i have actually considered doing three shows next week yeah one show where it's nothing but us promoting and like we do a show where we talk about the national stuff completely separate, just because I think there's that many shows next weekend. So, uh, but you know, go check out one this weekend. Yeah. Uh, and guess what? Uh, maybe come get, maybe come see me get my butt whooped. It could happen. If you, if you get annoyed by me, the way I, you know, hearing me talk every week, come watch. Ten bucks, ten bucks for a ticket. Come watch me get my butt get beat. Hurt. You do so much work, man. Folks, he does he does an insane amount of work on this podcast. Y'all don't understand. Y'all should be thanking this man. He he is tirelessly working on this podcast. And if he gets hurt, I can't do this. Is I the headline become this. does Jack Jameson end the Tapped Out Wrestling Podcast? If he hurts me, Tapped Out Wrestling Podcast could be on hiatus until I'm recovered. I don't even I don't even know where the stuff is. Nick Nick has just been I can't do this without you. Please, Nick, don't get hurt. I'm gonna cry. We'll find out Friday, Tannery Row, Buford, Georgia, 
Bell time, 7 o'clock. We will see. Right? I mean, Jack Jameson, I told you, got some, I got a surprise for you. So we're going to find out what it is, and oh, my hope is surprise. I hope it pays off. So anything else before we get out of here, brother? No. Well, what's the old saying, man? If I've got nothing and you've got nothing, what time is it? It's time to tap out. <laughs>